I would love for you guys to please welcome in the chat our incredible friends, our incredible Sambia ambassadors. They are just incredible hairdressers, incredible teachers, salon owners, and they are here to bring so much love to you all. Please welcome Roger Molina and Ellen Devine. What's up, you two? <laughs> What's going on out there, guys? I can see, oh, we got Ireland in the house, got some oh, Illinois wow. people. Hey, we got some Minnesotas, we got beauty schools. Professionals, awesome. our team. Boy, we're we're super excited to be with you guys this morning. Thank you so much for joining us uh, and for Sam Via having us back again, just to kind of come in and do some new stuff. And uh, we just wanted to get you guys into maybe a, a frame of mind that lately we've had the gift of sort of entering. And what I mean is, if it's just strictly influence, we started watching a bunch of painting and started getting into Bob Ross, who I like grew up with painting and stuff, and I started painting again. And I'm gonna share with you just real quick, like a little blip of a thing that is kind of indicative of what we're gonna do here on our class. I know I got a light and all that, but I'm gonna play this. So the, the idea or the concept that we wanna talk about is working in areas. And in painting, you'll start one area and do all the little details and everything else, but then you blend and you fade and you do all your stuff before you move on. Once you move on to the next point and you start working on the next point, it's the blend and fade of that area, get all the details done and then move to the next. And like in painting, I'm working from back to front. Nice. Uh, working from back to front, meaning the stuff that's way back there and then I'm coming forward, 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 forward. So the way I'm going to apply this to my haircut personally is that I'm going to start in the back where this is her background and then I'm going to go forward, 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 forward. And each area that I work, I'm going to stop and refine and do an extra little touch on that piece and then move on to the next. Opposingly, it would be doing the whole haircut and then getting another scissor and coming back and doing all the detailing and then getting another scissor and coming back and doing all the detailing. I just want to work in little areas and so that it's easier to navigate because I don't know about you guys, sometimes navigating art or navigating haircuts is the most complex part. So if you break it down to little bites, it's a little easier to eat. So I'm going to get some things going on that. I was going to set you up on what she's going to do. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. We're gonna slow down. So I'm going to actually just start my sectioning as we uh, talk about how I'm going to approach it. My approach is going to be a little bit different. Um, so I'm going to approach it kind of the detailing after, and I like to call it like foundational haircutting. So I'm going to put my foundation in, but this time in this haircut, the foundation is going to be the layers. So in the chat box, if you guys have ever had a guest come in and ask for a specific haircut and you have no idea what they're talking about, <laughs> say yes in the chat box because that happened to me, I would say over a little couple months ago maybe. Uh, yes, right? So I had um, someone younger generation come in and say, I want the wolf cut. And I was like, the what? What's the wolf cut? I'm showing my age right now. So the wolf cut is basically, it's like a little combo, of almost like a shag slash mullet, but in more modern times. Awesome, I see some yes, you guys have been there, awesome. Um, so it's gonna be something like this. We live in San Diego. What's happening is we're seeing a lot of like natural texture, especially post COVID. A lot of people aren't really styling their hair the same anymore. They're trying to get it to look a lot more natural and lived in. So we are gonna be going through and kind of mimicking this wolf cut is what was trending on TikTok actually. So I'm gonna be going through and doing that and I'm gonna start with the fringe right away. So I'll wait a second to get there. I'm just gonna walk through my sectioning. A simple section from the top of the head to the top of the ear, dividing the head from front to back is gonna be first. I like to keep it real simple. And so that's kind of how it's funny, we talk about Bob Ross, but um, it inspired us so much because one, it was so much fun to watch actually him paint and super soothing, super relaxing, but also the way that he approaches his paintings. If you guys haven't watched it, it's on YouTube, of course, but they say, or he says, you know, it's a happy little accident. So the whole thing about the happy little accidents is it's your creation. There's no right or wrong way in cutting hair or in a painting, but whatever happens, whatever you see fit on that canvas is where we take it. My next section is just gonna be from the corner of the eye, right where that head starts to change direction. So if I use my comb in my hand, it comes to a point, boom, it's right there. You can even take your comb, place it vertically, 
and watch it rock up. And right where it lands, I'm gonna take my section. So I'll refine those and catch you up when I cut the fringe. Ellen, did you um, put any kind of cutting lotion in? Yeah, I'm gonna be working with One United um, from Redkin, which I will catch you up and show you how to apply it once we actually start cutting. Thanks, Andrew. I need a little juice, so I'm gonna put it in there right now. So I'm gonna use it too. A lot of mine has been like kind of prepped and wet with stuff, so you won't see me apply a lot, but I will do every once in a while. Instead of adding water, I'll just add that just to give it a little bit more slip, a little bit more wet enough. Okay, so I'm going to dive in, get up close with this bob. So what I, what we're going to do here with mine is that this the bob that I've cut already is real classic, kind of a nod to the old school. I figured if I'm doing something Bob Ross, you know, it's got to be something that's classic, but I can put a twist on it in little ways. And the twist that we're getting is really the new scissor, the 14 tooth uh, point cutting scissor. The Sammy's launching June 1st. Um, this, this one says 13 200 if you're a numbers person like me. Um, the 13 200, the, the point cutting comb is what I, or point cutting scissors, what I'm going to use the whole time. What we did first here is drug everything down. I used the wider teeth of this, what is it, the 30 13. I use the wider teeth of this to hold it. And when I get on top of that area, I just camp out and I close, 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 close. Eventually, those teeth, 14 of them, hit it so much that they break through that area and it makes it really light on the bottom. And it looks like I've point cut it, only I have not. So if you're like me, the freedom of point cutting sometimes and, uh, can get a little strange. So for me, I like having this straight blade that I can like hold in a spot and get a point cut result. Here's what I mean. I've graduated the first two or three sections of this already and I have the last two to go. That's what I'm gonna show you now. I have a slight diagonal forward angle. My finger angle should match my subdivision line here. My elevations is also like that even diagonal and you can see the hair underneath. I'm gonna pinch hard so these fingers are now closing tight so I can turn it towards the camera here. The better it stays right where it lives, the more accurate you'll be, but for sake of vision, I'm gonna pick it up and like turn it towards you a bit. I'm gonna camp in one spot. When I say camp in one spot, I mean keep the scissor there. I kind of slightly go up and down, slightly go up and down, and it gives me this like straight line, but the result is very texturized or point cut effect, if you will. So last section that I'll show here, a diagonal down, match your finger angle to that, slide right to that point, and then I'm gonna go up and down across the surface of that thing, point cutting. My result in the end is that it looks like I came through and texturized this with the point cutting technique, but it was a blunted line, but it's still soft. You can see that very bottom edge is sort of diffused like it was point cutted. So I'm gonna get my next sections dropped down and we'll do a relatively similar process and I'll catch you up on the last two sections of that one when I come back. Roger, would this technique that you're sharing with us, would it work for uh, curly haired clients? Absolutely, I prefer it. <laughs> okay, so just to catch you guys up, to give you like an idea of what we're shooting for, I'm just gonna show you a picture off my phone. So the wolf cut, because I had to Google some stuff to figure out what the heck was going on with this. So this is a long version. Now every version can be different, and I know there's a light there, but you'll see it has a lot of layering kind of like where the top of the ear is going down. Another version, this is kind of where I got more of my inspiration from. It's a little more of a shag side of it. And then if you look and talk to a millennial, we might say it reminds us a little bit of the Rachel from Friends. So I'm taking it more in the shag direction and we're gonna try and like get rid of the part once we get in there. But um, to start, I'm gonna start with the fringe on this. Now the reason I'm starting with the fringe is it's gonna create my guideline for the whole thing. So I'm gonna just lower this mannequin just a touch. And then the first thing I usually like to do is cut a guideline. So I'm gonna drop my first section here. And if you're just joining, we're doing a little bit of a mullet shag. And I'm gonna be working with my reversible blending shears. So I'm gonna do the first half of my cut purely just with these shears. My cutting lotion product of choice is One United by Redken. Just like Roger said, it's gonna give a little bit of slip also a little bit of control. If I keep putting water in it, it's gonna dilute that product. And so I wanna keep the product in the hair, let the control do its job and get my next section out of the way. Okay, so sliding in. So with this 
first guideline, I'm going to start kind of make sure her head's straight. <laughs> I'm going to start in the center front of the head. And as I go down, I made the first guideline about the bridge of the nose right here. So I'm just going to connect. I'm going to grab a little piece from the opposite side. I'm going to hold it straight down in its natural fall. It's hard to see right here, but there's my guideline. I'm going to cut. I'm going to lay my fingers against the nose. And now I'm just going to use my blending shears. These are the reversible blending shears. And I'm going to cut, but I'm going to move up and down as I cut. I'm moving up and down so that we get a little bit more texture than I might get with a classic shear. So this is a great tool to use if someone's like very passionate about no razor being used on their hair at all, but you still want to get some texture in the hair. And so I'm going to go through with that. Now on the other side, just on the corner of the eye, you're going to see right about, oh, right here at the cheekbone is where my next guide is going to be. So move right here. Boom. This is it right about below that cheekbone. So I'm going to just get close, cut the opposite side. I like to come in front and just check. And now I'm going to do the same thing up and down, up and down, up and down just till it gets off. Okay. Now, quick and easy, I'm just going to take this next section. You could take it in two or one. I start, in, I do about two just for comfort for me. And this is a nice way to add some layering as well as cut your perimeter at the same time. So I'm going to grab all of this hair, including my guides that I just cut. Going to pull directly up. So elevating straight up 90 degrees vertical. And now when I step to the side, you can see Boom, there's one guide and then my other guide's here. All you have to do is connect the dots now. So I'm elevating straight up and then my finger angle is gonna be a little bit diagonal. And now I'm going to go through and same thing, up and down, my ring's getting in the way, but I want you guys to see up and down, up and down. Now your body position for this, you would stay either right in front of it for comfort or right behind it. And now I'm just gonna add in the rest of the hair and I'm just gonna comb comb and I'm going to bring the back hair to the front a little bit. So when I talk over direction, I'm bringing it forward to that previous section. So slightly over directed, but still straight up. Follow my guide, which has a little bit of a diagonal finger angle to it. My blunt blade is on the outside. doesn't quite matter at this point. And I'm just going to continue to cut moving and shifting the scissors as I cut till I get all that length off. And when it drops, you're gonna get a nice little side fringe, just like so with some layers to it. Now, when I go through to dry this, I'm probably gonna dry it with a subtle middle part because that's kind of like the style of things at this point, but it can be pulled down too and just push to the side slightly. So you're just getting a little bit of texture. You're getting this like whip on the fringe and it adds a lot of softness. So thanks, yeah, I'm glad you love the softness. If you guys are learning something, give a little bit yes in the chat box. It's a really quick and simple way to add layering as well as cutting your perimeter all at the same time using that reversible blending shear, just like so. So I'm gonna start cutting this layers. Now the layers that I'm gonna start is gonna cut the perimeter. I'm gonna do the same thing all the way from the front all the way to the back. So once Roger fills you in on what he's doing, I'll catch you up and I'll still be doing the same motion. Cool? Perf, Got perf, it. Perf, 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 my good. Okay, so building into the graduation, now I'm getting up higher. Now what I just did sort of off screen was you saw the first step that I did, which you may recognize as like the occipital nape area. It's the stuff that lives beneath that like last round of the head. If you take your comb, and you put it flat against the head, you'll see that it exits just about that spot. That's why I cut that first, because it's the only hair that's hanging straight down. Everything else, as I get up around the head, has to sort of round around a plane before it falls down it. So it changes the way that this one feels. So what I did on this one is the same exact motion. I dropped it straight down, cut it off blunt with that point cutting scissor, and then I took it straight out from where it lives, elevated it straight out to here. Oh, I missed one and I camp and get it right there. So you get this texturized, or let me give you a little bit more space to see. You get this sort of texturized influence that looks like it's been chipped into, but it was a straight blunt line. And that's the dopeness of this scissor. So I'm gonna show you another section of that, but how it changes as it gets towards the top surface. 
So if you recall, the nape area is low. This middle section is straight out. And then as I get toward this top, it might have a slight shift in elevation to the high. So I'm going to have to bring her down just a bit, just so she's at eye level. High, high level. And I'm gonna go right in the center from that high point of the head, and I'm gonna take a pretty skinny slice through. Comb that to my hand. Here's a hot tip that Sam Villa showed me. Get your position locked and comb to your hand. Now, also, comb both sides of the section. What I mean is take the comb to the left side and the right side. What that does is directs everything to the middle, make sure that you don't end up with an uneven amount of graduation. So here I'm gonna just slightly go above the horizontal and I'm just gonna connect those dots, boom. Here's a hot tip that we found with this scissor. If you wanna call me scissor, you take this thing, oh, I just did not hear, welcome. Hit both sides of the section, like we were saying, and then if you, when you're point cutting, right, you would leave some space so that you could come back and point cut, right? With this scissor, something that I like is to leave some space and then point cut on your line. Go a little bit in. Come back outside your line. Go a little bit in. And then boop, 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 camp. What I'm suggesting doing is creating different points of entering so I'm going a little bit deep, cut, a little bit out, cut, a little bit in, cut, so that I have three different guideline lengths, essentially, that I'm creating, so I have more choppiness. Notice that I'm doing this to this section that lives above, meaning the round of the head is here. Everything underneath was cut, like, pretty strong so that it maintains weight and gets a graduation. This stuff that's above, I can do that, like, dive in point cut thing so that it hangs a little bit looser above. The stuff that wraps around the head and sits up here can have more play, but as I get down deeper into the depths of my bob, I want to be more structured. So here we go, last section. I'm going to take a pretty big section here. You notice that I'm taking, keep hitting my computer, I'm sorry. Keep taking pretty big sections. This top was done in thirds, so three sections per quadrant, really. And I'm going to elevate, boop, right to that point. Because I'm in the area around the back of the ear where this hair falls, I'm not going to do that jump in thing. I'm just going to make it one strong line. Let me take that line out again so you can see what it actually looks like. So you get a very point cut result. It doesn't look like a blunt line. There's lots of chips and points that go into it. Now, in this area, before I move on, this is my last step, Elle. I'm going to take my Invisiblend. And I'm going to go back and forth across this surface in the same way. Like Bob Ross always does this blending thing where he says make X's, right? When I'm get when I'm trying to get rid of a line, I go whoop 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 whoop, and it creates a blend through those lines. So I'm going to think in X's here. We come X's that way. I'm going to go X's this way. Now open and close the scissor. So I comb it into like this diagonal sort of silhouette. And with the back of your hand, you pat that hair into place. So it's all writing exactly where it's gonna live, nice and round and low. Then I come in blunt blade on the bottom, open and close, just use the first few teeth. That's how much hair you should lose each time, burly, anything. So boop, 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 boop. And the more you work this, the lighter it starts to get. And really you're trying to achieve that desired result. If she has really, really fine hair, you don't need much. If she's got like a ton of hair, then you can feel a little bit more freedom to get a little bit weird. But recognizing the client always shifts the technique. And of course the color, you know, maybe you have a ton of really beautiful blonde on this surface and you have a lot of dark underneath. You can focus your weight removal on underneath if that helps and keep the pretty colors. So don't always just cut it because you think you should. Look at the hair that you love and leave it. And the hair that you don't love so much, cut that stuff off. Uh, creating beauty is sometimes just eliminating ugly. <laughs> so I'm going to continue working on like softening this little bit, work my way to the front. But I think that's a good point for me to hand it back over to Elle. And I will catch you back up in just a minute. We got a question. Roger, when you're um, when you're creating that X pattern, just when you're when you're working it. So the idea that you're working with is just trying to soften the shape. Are you trying to actually reduce weight within the shape, or just kind of create a softer finish? Um, essentially, it's both. You know, I've, I've created this strong line, 
And when you create that strong line, you get like kind of a light bulb, right? Mm -hmm. And for heads, it's better to have like a softer silhouette on the outside surface. While if she was fine and light haired, I'd be leaving the structure underneath so it would fill up that bottom, especially around that scaria. But mm -hmm. if it was a really, really massive amount of hair, I'd be, be able to blast through everywhere. So what I'd say is if it's fine and light hair, I'm working on maybe just this top surface. If it's really thick hair, I can get all the way in. And it's like the, the X pattern is really just to give you a starting point, mm -hmm. right? So if I, if I stay close to the root, this hair by nature is gonna pop up more and kind of expose the underneath. So that may influence it. There's so many different rules to talk about when it comes to it, but I would say the X pattern for the top surface really works well to create movement. Mm -hmm. While the X pattern underneath, I, I tend to like, the hair traps it. So it doesn't really make that much of a difference on how it moves underneath, but the top it really affects. Cool. I answered that question terribly, but thanks for trying. Thanks for trying, Rod. You gave us what we needed. <laughs> okay. okay, so I want to catch you guys back up with the layers. now. I'm a little shorty, so uh, I'm going to be cutting real high right here just so I can make sure you guys can see. But I want to show you, okay, look at the difference of the size. This is cut the same length, the same thing's happening. This is diffused with some product in it. This right now is just straight. So you can see the framing that I'm getting and how exaggerated it can be. Now, remember, I'm doing this based off of my taste and what I think is cute, the length of it. If you want to do something like this and create this uh, face framing, all you have to do is maybe grab, make it longer. Or if you don't want it so short, you can adjust your finger angle to point out towards the bottom. That's going to give you extra length. Right now, what we're doing is we're elevating it up to what I would call the horizontal 90, meaning this is a horizontal line and I elevate in direction to the room is what I'm trying to say. So here's a vertical line, horizontal. I'm elevating it straight out horizontally. And this is going to give me a little bit harder of a result, but a little more dramatic as well. So very strong lines in this haircut. My over direction is straight out right in front of the face. And so I just want to show you, I'm basically wrapping all this hair straight out towards the face and I'm using my blending shears still and I'm just going to go through and continue to cut. Now I've already worked my way to the back section, but this is exactly how I cut it. Now I just want to show you how I'm over directing it. I'm not pulling it towards the nose. I'm literally coming straight out right in front of the corner of the eye right there. And I'm cutting just a straight line with a vertical finger angle. So now let's get this last section. Now I'm gonna go back through and layer to get some of this top weight off, but I'm once again cutting the perimeter at the same time as getting some shorter layers in this bottom. So now when we come to this last section in the back, this is what I've already cut. So I'm gonna grab all the hair and I'm gonna work in like basically two sections or three, depending on how much hair you can grab at one time. Now the tear at the top, I'm actually just gonna wrap it against the head and my body is right in front of her nose. And if I come through, here's where I'm cutting. My guide is right there. I'm gonna take my blending shear up and down, in and out, cause I'm trying to get some texture. Now I wouldn't suggest cutting this high up. I would cut probably down lower. I just have it lifted up for you to see. So I'm gonna wrap this around the head, work my way down to that nape area. And you can see that this hair is already starting not to reach. So not too much to cut at this point, but still keeping a straight line and letting over direction create that short to long scenario for me. So I don't have to go through and cut exact perimeter and then put my layers in. So now last section at the bottom here, and then I'll kind of catch you up how I'm gonna just layer the top a bit more. I'm gonna get the bottom section. If some hair falls, don't worry about it, just comb it out of the way. I'm gonna pull it to the center of my body. And you can see I only have a little tiny bit left. And I'm gonna cut. So let's see, what does this do to the haircut? Now, I don't know if that was for Roger or for me, but just to explain these layers right here, 
I'm over directing it forward to give me a short to long scenario. And now I'm gonna go through and knock off this excess length that I see in the back here. So this is where you can start putting your signature on your work. Um, you know, sometimes you maybe wanna leave it a little longer, leave it shorter. Uh, what's so funny is when we kind of caught on to the whole Bob Ross thing, we were staying, well, we were on like in an Airbnb and we couldn't figure out how to use the TV. So we put on the first channel that came on and it was Bob Ross and it was the joy of painting. And we were like, oh my gosh, this is so soothing. And to see someone so happy doing their job, it made us think about, you know, think about the times, maybe it's been a little rough with the pandemic and stuff, but you think about how much hairdressers are passionate about their career. Um, I always say like, I didn't get in the, in the career for money, but because I'm passionate about it and because it's joyful and it's happy to do. And so when you're creating, it's important to look at your canvas, which is the hair and understand that it's not just doing a haircut, but creating a shape and it's art, whether you think it or not, it's art. And you're creating this customized for your client. And so you're truly reading that canvas. So if you're getting some techniques out of this in the chat bar, say I got some and realize that this is a technique. So you can shift it lengthwise. You can make it longer. If it's not your style, just know these are options to kind of go through and see what will work for your guests in the salon. So to catch you up, I'm going to start in the back here and I'm just going to start layering the hair. My guide is going to be what I cut on the other side. It's a couple inches from the scalp, hits around that parietal area. Good. I'm glad you guys got some. So I'll catch you up once I get to the front and finish the layering. It's a super quick haircut. After that, we're going to do some styling. I got them. I got them. I got them. See you. <laughs> Ellen, um, would this work for finer hair fabrics? Yeah, for sure. Um, if you want like to do th thicker hair versus finer hair. So actually what I would suggest, the way I'm cutting it, I would totally do on finer hair, those straight, bold, hard lines. Cause that's, if you've ever had people say, I want choppy layers, they just want to see their layers. And sometimes if we blend them too much and they're too soft, they don't see them. So elevating it out, horizontally or straight up vertically is going to give you a really hard line in the silhouette and they want to see that. If someone had thicker hair, what I would do, and then I'll pass it to you, Roger. If someone had thicker hair, I would take the hair and maybe elevate it up to start softening that and getting rid of some weight. So this is going to give the illusion of a pretty hard line with a lot of weight. If someone had thicker hair, I would elevate it up above that horizontal and then it would help give length at the bottom, but also reduce a little more weight. You could also change your tool choice. So maybe instead of doing, oh, I don't know, a blending shear for it, maybe I would use just a solid shear for that. If you guys got a good amount of to or topic question answered out of that, just say I'm good in the chat box and I'll catch you guys up after Roger gets you settled with this. Boom, boom. Okay. so. I'm going to tag onto that question, Andrew, because I think that one was the one that you probably most often get as hairdressers. We say, can when you're teaching someone a haircut, they say, can you do this on all kinds of hair types? Yes. Right. Uh, with this haircut, especially the one that Elle's doing right now, if you, she, here's what she's using, right? Or no, she's using this one. So it has a ton of teeth. So it creates a softer result, right? You could do the same thing with the new 14 tooth one that has bigger teeth that it gives more of like an exaggerated result, like a point cut technique. You could do the exact same angles and everything she's doing and use this scissor and you would end up getting a little bit stronger line than you would with one with less teeth, right? So the more teeth it has, the more it bites. The bigger teeth it has, the less it bites. But it'll, that means that it leaves hair in between as well. So it gets a little bit more of a solid result. That being said, I'm going to go over here and show you how soft the result gets at the same time, as long as you keep working with all the varied tools. i got to get a comb too, Raj. Here I go. <laughs> um, I'm just going to show you a real quick tip when it comes to finishing, because not only is it important that you get the finishing work with the cut done, but the finishing on a bob a lot of times is the key. And this is my tool of choice almost always. It's the comb, the blow dryer. Um, you starting out here in this back, it comes to X patterns once again, Andrew. 
when I, I'm gonna do it on low volume, high heat, just so that it's not as loud. I'm gonna come and follow the shape of the head and my comb turns with the head. Here's what we see a lot. Comb flat, press hard, flicks out. All right, the more I do that, the more of a flick I'm gonna get. If you ever get like a little ducktail in the bottom of your bobs, that's probably what's going on. So you turn your hand, you rotate your wrist with the head as you go by. The air follows the comb. And I'm making sure that I cup under. When I get underneath this round of the head under here, I cup down. My hair goes around the surface and presses down. But my comb turns with the head shape. Good. So it's really mapping and turning with that head. I'll give you the back view of it. X pattern, you go the opposite direction now. And stretch, watch my wrist bend and turn. It's all in that turn of the wrist. All right, so if that little flick is following the round of the head, you shall have round results. Now, if I'm not getting enough control, switch it over to the finer teeth to that. And then I got just a little bit second longer hold with just a little bit more of a polish. Now, as you get done with this, I'm going to kind of go back to what we had talked about earlier. We talked about earlier doing the X pattern with this, and I said how if you're cutting the top surface, you can make this X pattern get the top surface. But I want to point out another way to get in there. So as I go down into the depths, I'm just going to move this top stuff back and out of the way. Not the stuff I'm still going to cut, but the stuff I already have cut. And just kind of move it out of the way. If you want to put a clip on it, you can just put a little tiny baby right there, right? And I put that no dent clip with Sammy so it keeps it up and out of the way and then drop this stuff down in a natch heat. That's natural. And then as it's laying down, recognize where my teeth are, right? Because wherever your teeth are, that's where you do the biting. And then, so if I'm coming here and I put the teeth down underneath and I work from the inside out, where is that removal coming from? Right? I don't see anything coming off that top surface, so it must be getting from inside. So if I want to get a significant amount and I keep diving deeper and deeper and deeper with those teeth, I'm coming in, sliding parallel with the scalp, turning, just like my comb. And once I'm turned, I open, close, open, close. I'm only using a few teeth at the bottom. Recognizing, just like the 14 tooth, this is a blunt blade. There is no sharp there. So I can like put that directly on my own head and it don't cut me, right? This will go down and against the scalp if you're worried about like this technique, like, getting cut, getting funny, start there. Once you kind of had it for a while, you can flip it. Once you're used to it and you feel confident with the tool, because it's not very often that you have the teeth to do the cutting, it's usually this blade and then the teeth are blunt. So it's a, it's a little bit of a reverse engineered, if you will, from the average, but I'll tell you what, that blunt blade on there is the whole thing and that roundness of the blade is the whole thing. Those two together create an invisible blend, like for real, it's not just a name that we came up with. It blends invisibly, and sometimes that's the hardest type to find. So here I am diving way down in there, and now I'm gonna come back the opposite direction. I got the teeth on the top. Oh, flip it, teeth on the bottom. Go back forward, teeth on the top. Teeth on the bottom, right? Switching, switching, switching. So I can keep working. And what I typically do, that question earlier, I felt like I answered it terribly when it said fine hair, thick hair. What I typically do is start on the outside surface where everybody needs it. And I keep going and keep doing it to the next one and the next one and the next one until I have the softness that I want all the way throughout and then I'm good. So for this last bit, all, all I'm really gonna do is take and cut a blunt flat line. How I'm gonna do it <clears throat> is drag all of the hair straight down, control it with, with all my heart. I wanna hold it with my fingers, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna hold it just straight down, camp there, cut it off. Seems like, am I doing this right? And then all of a sudden, all the hair releases. I'm doing this side different. I did it with the 14 tooth on the other, and I'm doing it on this side with my invisible end. And the point being is that when you use one with a lot of teeth, you get a lot softer line on the bottom. 
when you use one with less teeth, you get more of a point cut, the texture on the bottom. So last little tiny touch here. Cut, 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 cut. So that on the left and right side, I'll have a slightly different finish. You can see this one has a little bit more points, right? There's a little tick, 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 tick on the bottom. Or well, this side has texture, yeah, sure, but it's more of a blunt hard line, right? Sits a little stronger than it does on the other. And the difference is a lot of teeth, a lot of texture. Less teeth, less texture. Bye. <laughs> okay. How are you guys doing? Feeling good this morning? I'm gonna catch you up with these layers. So yeah, raise the roof, feeling good. I gotta wake myself up. It's early over here in California. Um, I saw a lot of Midwest people on there. I'm originally from St. Louis. What's up Midwesterners? Uh, okay, so back to it. Basically all I did when I was determining my length here, now this is what I would call a happy little accident via Bob Ross status. I originally was gonna leave this layer a little bit longer and then by the time I finished, I was really liking how short that layer is. Now my client here told me that they were gonna wear the hair naturally curly, so I took it into account, you know what I mean? But <laughs> just realized that before you cut, look at the canvas. Look at how the shape of the silhouette's looking. So the silhouette is that side view. Where do you wanna see those layers start forming? With this particular cut, what I'm noticing is, compared to a shag, where a shag can be really leaned out on the bottom, there's much more weight down there and a lot of kind of flippy layers. Now, I don't wanna get this wrong, but I'm pretty sure the name like wolf cut, based off my research, um, is like an anime thing, right? So it was from like, I think the 80s or 90s. And that's kind of what we're seeing a lot of from that era right now. So I just followed my guideline and now I'm back to the front here and I'm gonna get to a view where you guys can see me actually cut. I switched my shear, I'm now using the streamline shear. So these streamlines have the forward set thumb, that's gonna give me that natural hand position so my wrist doesn't hurt in the long run. And it's got super sharp convex blades so it cuts like butter. These are my favorite for point cutting. I also love, it's got a nice little sharp point to it right there. And I believe these are the six, six inch right there. So the Streamline series, one of my favorite shears. I love to point cut with them wet and dry personally. Okay, so now all I'm doing, if you look at the section, I went from the high point of the head to the top of the ear. I'm working my way around in radial sections or pivoting around the head. And within each like section I've put in, we call them bevels, but really I'm going through with the shape of the head. I'm just doing two sections. So I'm taking larger subsections because the more hair I grab, the more texture that will live within those layers. So I'm gonna pick up my guide from behind the section, elevate straight up. Now I'm going vertically straight up and I'm going to follow my guide, which is right there. Now I'm gonna point cut with this. When I point cut, I wanna leave a little bit of distance from my guide and the hair right there, I'm gonna step to the side. And I personally like to go in diagonally with my shear. And I like to kind of move up and down because I don't want a uniform line. I want some texture, I want it to look different lengths. Nothing has to be matchy matchy, especially when you're trying to get a super textured result. Okay, and then after, if I want a little extra something, I'll do deeper point cuts. Now notice that I'm not following my layers down, I'm actually elevating it, and I'm allowing that hair that's already cut to fall out, and I'm only cutting the stuff that is in my hand. I'm not gonna pick up anything that I've fallen out of my hand at that point. Okay, last section, I worked my way around the head doing this exact same thing. Boom, diagonal. When you point cut to try and avoid cutting yourself, I've done it many times in my life, I've probably done it recently, these scissors are sharp in the best way possible. <laughs> um, you wanna cut, but you when you cut is when you're actually pulling out. So I'm gonna go through and I'm just going to cut and pull out and try and not cut myself there. But all this is gonna do is kind of give nice tousled short layers. Now to kind of set up for the blow dry, I'm gonna step to the side and dry this before we finish anything out. You can see the shape that's starting to happen. So. They have naturally wavy hair, and I'm actually gonna use um, a new product that I've been working with, and I'll pass it to Roger. It's uh, the Weed Add stuff. So I'm gonna go through with the heat and humidity uh, gel. This is gonna actually lock in 
um, my curls without being too crunchy. And I really, really am loving it. So it's a nice soft gel. I rub it on my hands and then I'm going to go through and kind of section by section. This is a great product for anyone with textured hair, wavy hair of all types. So it's meant for everyone with uh, textured hair. I'm going to rake through each section and then I'm going to shake. So I'm shaking it out and kind of scrunching up. And I'm going to try and do this through each section. And then I'm going to lightly diffuse with my Sanvia Vision blow dryer. And I just put my diffuser on it. And then as I diffuse the mannequin or, you know, my guest here, I'm going to tilt uh, their head back slightly. So then I can get a little more volume as I start to diffuse. So I'll grab that just to show you real quick. Grab my diffuser and just get a little bit of a light diffusing action. Now I might not finish this whole head, but I am going to show you some last minute texturizing on the dry side if we don't get to that point. So I'll be over here diffusing away. Diffusing. <laughs> right on. So I'm seeing all these things come up here, like checking the comments real quick and seeing the team. The squad here at Samvia is incredible, guys. They're like, these guys don't stop doing all day, all day long they're doing and trying to create new content and new ways to reach you guys, new ways to teach you guys. So if you, you know, to see them around, if you know who they are, Katie and Dana and Andrew and all those guys, epic dudes, send them some love. Like just give them a little thumbs up here in the day just to make them feel good. Thank you guys from our end for always making it such a great experience. Um, and we're stoked. We're stoked to be here again. Finishing up this last bit of the bob. I got the last couple sections. Now, just to get you up to speed, I grabbed basically little vertical slices and I direct them back to where that last piece was, camped here. It's that diagonal, fingers, diagonal elevation. And I'm camping now with the 14 tooth comb, or sorry, 14 tooth scissor again, taking scissors or sections as I work back. Oh, already cut that one. Next. Not going to be much hair to cut, if any, just a little tiny bit at the top. And this stuff has a face frame on it, so it may not make it. It will not. But I want to show you something here. Like now that I have this all locked in. On the front, it's really all about direction, right? So direction and creating direction and wanting to open up around the face, really commonplace right now. So what I do is I'm going to come back again. This is the Invisiblend. Because I want to create a lot of movement, I'm going to actually pick the hair up with the blade. Here's what happens. When I grab it with my fingers, I can move it here and move it here and move it here and move it here. And it would all get this sort of erratic behavior, right? which if that's what you're looking for, get in there because sometimes that flyaway is mischievous and beautiful. But if I want to just do it almost naturally, come in with the blade, pick up the hair with the actual blade and work back away from it. That one I've already done. Next one. Already done. So each time I cut one, just put it out of the way. Noticing that I'm cutting from front to back, so that will make this hair by nature move back. Each time I take a new bit, if I take one from the top, let's say, remember I increased my elevation up here, so I can increase my elevation up here, move it out of the way. All right, every time I get done with a piece, it's already been done, move it out of the way. When I go deeper down to the section, recognize my elevation should stay low, so I go low. But I've already done it, so move it out of the way. All right. If this is a girl and this is bothering her, it's very possible that you could take a clip, and this is what I'll do majority of the time, my little no dent clip. Take that hair and kind of put it uphill, but leave it to where the little top is pointing up so that I can take that piece, cut what I like, and once it's done, tuck it behind the clip. Soft of her face now, it's a little bit more beautiful. Behind the clip. Behind the clip. Behind the clip. You understand, right? I keep working my way down. If this is still full, this is a little full for me. Stay low, cut back. Stay low, cut back. What if you said, Roger, around the front, 
I want it to kind of shoot forward. Okay, cool. That's where the X's come in. Make sure it's cupped under nice. You're gonna come from the opposite way. This has an equal length handle, right? So I can flip it. Once I got that flip, whoa, right? I can come from underneath and get some of the weight underneath if that's what's happening. To me, it feels like there's a little bit of bulk at the bottom, but underneath. So now flipping the teeth to the bottom where I need to chew will work better. Still need some from the top, but I'm gonna direct these ones forward now again. And then that way that hair will now want to push more towards the face. So direction is created by blending with scissors or texture with scissors or whatever your result you're trying to get. You still do it in the direction that you'd like so that it will move and go the way that you choose. Creating texture doesn't eliminate your ability to create movement, specific movement. One more on this top, how it's heavy. Now I want it to come from the top. So where would my teeth be? Top, right? If I need to lose weight off the top, teeth are on top. And I move from back to front. I think I got myself in a very good position here. I think I like everything completely. I could probably blow dry a touch and get it in the right spot, like 100%. But what I want to do now is just show you my almost last step to the bob almost every time. <clears throat> and it's a nod to the old school, right? It's that one where you're coming in and detailing that very bottom line sharply. And I'm doing it with this new scissor that I just got from Sammy. It's that 5.5. And, and here I go with the numbers again, the 13550. That's my jam. The reason is because it's five and a half inches long. It's short, so I can get into the nooks of the nape and the trunk, the little like critical spots down here that are so close to the scalp. And then I'm going to come, boom, 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 generate a new feeling out of that same old bob just with taking it tight right there at the nape. So that really makes all the difference in the world and the sharpness of it, especially when it comes up and sits here. So just give it a really strong silhouette and I'm cutting, making sure that the blade is striking it levelly in a short little bite at a time. Anytime you're making a round surface, it is easier to take it little bites at a time, right? So even like maybe camping and getting a point cut and coming into this bottom hairline to soften it up. It's easier to make a round line with short little strokes than it is to make a round line with long square. Like that's a straight line, right? So it takes little bites to get it done. But there we are. I could feel that Ellen has arrived at some more information. So I'm gonna migrate off to the side here for just one moment. There we go. Let's see. All right, guys, we got 10 minutes left. How are we feeling? Looking good. This uh, right here, we've fully diffused now. I'm loving it. I think it looks awesome. So once again, remember, this is just the style in which I see it. And you can use these same techniques and kind of start altering them based off of your client's canvas, meaning your hair. Um, so now all I'm going to do is if you look at one side, this side I fully texturized and wanted to sink in some weight. So now I'm going to start looking visually. And as Bob Ross would say, let's get crazy. What the heck? Let's so let's have a little fun. So I'm going to start sinking in. I'm going to use my uh, dry cutting. They're my slide cutting shears, actually. And I'm going to start cutting to the curl. Now, this is how I actually cut all my curly hair guests. I'll diffuse it. I'll start looking at where that hair starts to bend. I know it's hard to see, but if you look right here, you can see rotations happening. And I'll go right at that bend. And I just sort of talk that down. Now I'm cutting on the inside of my shear. So right about here, cutting right on the inside and just subtly moving my thumb a bit. And I'm gonna start sinking that weight in. This is gonna add a little more texture, more customized layering. And I'll probably work my way around the head just a little bit, give you guys some ideas of how I would whittle this away. It's your true Picasso moment, or I guess Bob Ross, since that's the theme. But it's really taking your spin on it and adding it customized to your guest's hair. And what I like about this haircut is, in my opinion, I think it's completely gender neutral. So anyone can wear this haircut. Um, it's definitely a San Diego style, if I do say so myself. I think one of our good friends kind of has a cut like this, right? Justin. So whittling away. What's up, Andrew? 
I was just going to say it kind of reminds me of um, like Jim Morrison kind of. Exactly. That's exactly piece. it. That's what I was thinking. One of our buddies, Roger actually just cut his hair, uh, kind of has a cut like this, Justin, right? Yeah. So it's completely gender neutral. He Anyone can Mick wear Jagger, it. Though. Mick Jagger was what he said. Yeah, he calls it Mick Jagger, right? So some bangs, fringe, framing. It's meant for anyone and everyone. This can be long. It can be short. It can do anything. So am I cutting in the front or the hair behind? So I'm actually cutting right now in front of the ear and I'm cutting inside out, right? So I'm coming in from behind that hair strand, but that doesn't necessarily matter. What matters is you look for the rotation of the curl. So I'm gonna cut right as it sees in, and I'll show you on my hand, and just sort of etch out. And I'm not actually just cutting a straight line, I'm just kind of layering away and leaving the length of that curl. So it's almost gonna be like a blade of grass. It's gonna um, have a thicker edge on the inside and thinner on the bottom. So as you go through, you can just start whittling away. Everyone's here for the 70s. I love it. Jimmy Morrison, best hair ever, totally. Jimmy. And just think about, you know, you could cut this with a part. They can style it with a part and split it completely. They can go to the side with it, push it back, wherever they want to wear it. You could also leave it longer if you want more of like a mullet kind of effect. So super cool. I love the natural texture lately and really just start whittling away at these. These scissors, again, they're the Artist Series slide cutting scissors. You'll notice the difference right here is, let me go to the white wall. The blade is a little more rounded. So the hair is gonna get pushed and give a really subtle cut and it won't end super choppy or anything. So, and uh, just like if you do have a guest with curly hair and you wanna try it, I do cut someone's hair uh, or any curly hair. This is just how I particularly do this. What I would do is I bring them into the salon and I actually either they can style their own hair if they're particular and have it diffuse and then I'll wash it after. Or if their hair is straight or not exactly, maybe it's in a bun and it's going to be all crimped, I would actually wash them, put my product in, diffuse them, and then go through and start cutting it like this. It's truly a way to customize your haircut based off of their face shape, the length they have, and the amount of curl they want to expose. So I'm just gonna continue doing this. I'll let Roger catch up finishing up, and we're almost there. I'll go to the back there. Here. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of, like when it comes to styling, some alts, you know, like, like control, command, different. So you can see classic Bob. Give it a little, give it a little love for Elle in the chat box there. Just tell her you love her, tell her she's doing great. I know she is, so you might as well say that. All right. Check it out. Um, awesome demo. Thanks, LeBray. What's up? All right, so check it out. So you see how you have one that's coming, well, one that's coming down and sitting kind of what I would call classic, right? Like the 60s Bob, it definitely had this like wedge buildup of weight at the bottom. And uh, speaking of gender neutral, in the 60s, there was like a point in time where they thought everybody should be able to wear this haircut. And if you really break it down, they're just subtly different between the two. It's like layering and unlayering, but the reality is that the haircuts that really latch on and take on for uh, what seems like an eternity of time are that one that can be worn on whoever. So that's something to consider. Uh, um, here we go. So as I'm working on this side, this right side, I want to go kind of alternate and give a little bit of a bang pop and then a flick. So you got to come up. First, that's the key. Go up with the comb and then you're going to make a C sheet. As you make the C, chase it with the hair, chase it with the air. And then at that very bottom, my comb turns out and flick. All right? So again, C shape, come up from the ridge, then up back, and almost like you're making a finger wave. Whoop. And as you wrap down, control the hair, flick out. And then that gives you that alternate to the other side, which is kind of a more modern take, I would say. This is kind of the classic, a little bit more of a modern flip on the exact same haircut. And the bob itself getting accomplished with similar tools, right? This is my as classic as it gets, in my opinion. <laughs> um, but I hope that you guys enjoyed that part very much. I know I enjoyed watching Elle very much and yeah. learned a ton of things from even just watching a demo. 
right? Yep. Very, Final very product, cool. still a little wet. If you want to soften it even more fun or even more, um, you can brush it out once it's finished. So I would say like if my, my big takeaway basically that I've learned from Bob Ross, and if you learn anything today is, you know, you might see an exact picture of something, maybe an exact haircut, but every canvas is different. So your client might have a different texture of hair. You might have a lot of different scenarios. And so it's truly important to just look at the canvas you're working with and whatever you feel is gonna make that canvas beautiful or really eye-catching, go with your gut. Have a little bit more fun, sculpt at it. And remember, it's not life or death at that point. It's just having fun with it. And when you have that trust with the client, they want you to have fun with it and they get excited when you get excited. So just remember that every canvas is different and the goal is to have fun with it, bring a little joy back into it. Yeah, you know, really like everything in this world was created with words. Every invention, every thing that anyone has ever created at all began with an idea that they first wrote down. And so recognizing that the power resides in the words is your first step. And that translates to all the platforms, you know, like whenever Bob Ross starts, he said, let's go up here and do a fantastic little painting. <laughs> There's nothing else that can happen besides a fantastic little painting when you say that we're going to do a fantastic little painting. So, you know, sometimes when you're with your guests, starting that, oh, I can't wait to do this. It's going to be so beautiful. She's automatically going, oh, yay. You know, you don't go, so how are you feeling? You doing all right? Everything okay out there? How's, how's COVID treating you? Like, you're going to get a bomb set them up with a fantastic little something and watch how different that changes how they respond to you recognize you're in charge of the communication right you're a two-way street of communication but you at any time can take it in a direction that's a fantastic little painting or the other way so the power is really with you and that's really what we want to say to you guys and Special shout out to Bob Ross. He's listening wherever <laughs> he is. And to the team at Sam Via and Sammy out there, our own very little Bob Ross. Totally. Our very own little Bob Ross is what I should say. Um, thanks, so, thanks so much, guys, for everything again. Yeah, always. thanks. Yeah, thank you both. That was awesome. And I think we all got a lot of happy little trees in our hearts right now <laughs> because you just totally shared so much content and so many. One of the fun things with this kind of duo style is there there are so many individual things you can pick up from each of you. So it's kind of like getting two for the price of one. Fantastic. Totally. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's fantastic. Thanks so much. That's, well, thank you both. Um, hang out backstage in the green room. We'll uh, just kind of wrap up here in a mem moment, and then I'll chat with you at, after we close down, all right? Right on. I have a time-lapse painting on my Instagram that I just did. <laughs> the one that I showed earlier, if you're like, wait, what? Was it? It's on my Instagram, the Roger Molina hair. If cool. you're interested in that. Awesome. Thank you both so much.